Good evening, our Lita First Assembly of God family. We are so, so very happy to be coming into your home, and we want to say thank you for inviting us. We have been looking forward to this day since Sunday to be able to connect with you once again. We do want you to know we continue to love you and pray for you, and um, what a great thing this is, technology. It's the best of the best that we have at this point. We're so happy that we can connect with you through this because we really miss you, all of you, and thankful again that we have this technology to be able to come to your homes. We want you to know that you are constantly in our thoughts, you're in our prayers, and we just look forward to the time when we come together sooner than, than later, we hope, to be able to be with you in person. Well, everyone, you know that the governor's executive order, stay-at-home order, is still in effect. So as a result, we're coming to you once again, not from the sanctuary at our Leader First Assembly of God Church, but we are actually here in our home in Palmdale. Uh, but nonetheless, we're super excited to be here with you tonight, to be able to look at the scriptures together, as well as have a time of prayer with you as we close our time together this evening. I wanted to share several announcements with you uh, this evening. Uh, one of them is, I just want to encourage you to check your email box often. If you would check your email, that's our one of our great uh, ways of being able to connect with you. Um, I want you to know, too, that if you have any kind of an emergency at all, feel free to call my cell number is 661-431-8178. Once again, it's 661-431-8178. So if you have any kind of an emergency, please don't hesitate to give, you, to give us a call because we want you to know that we will be here for you and to serve you, to help you in any way that we can. The other thing I want to mention once again today is the Right Now uh, Media. It's a tremendous, tremendous resource for the whole family, for moms and dads, grandparents, for the boys and girls. There's just great programming on it. And it comes to all of our regular attendees at First Assembly at no cost. The only thing is that we do need your email address in order for us to get you signed up for it. And you can find that on our website at arlitafirst.org. You'll notice as you scroll down by where it says right now media, uh, it'll say update your information, and if you'll do it at that point, that would be great. The other thing I want to do is just say thank you so much for your faithfulness in worshiping the Lord with the tithe and with offerings. I want to just say thank you so very much. We certainly do appreciate it. The scripture says this here uh, in Luke chapter 6, verse 38. It says, and it's one of my favorite passages. It says, give and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, will it be poured into your lap. For with the measure you use, <clears throat> it will be measured to you. What a tremendous passage of scripture that is. Think about that, pressed down, so it's pushed down, there's no room there, just pressed down. It's shaken together to make there be a little bit more room. And then uh, running over. And that's what the Lord has promised to us as we're faithful in our giving unto Him. And so, a thank you again for your giving online, your online giving. You can see on our website, there's the tab that says giving. You can uh, do it through that mode. Or we have sent stamped envelopes to all of you who may not be uh, giving online to help you with that there. So, uh, we're going to take just a moment right now and we're going to thank the Lord uh, as you prepare your gift, if you have your gift with you, your envelope with your, uh, your check, um, or you're getting ready to go online, we just want to ask and thank the Lord for his blessing upon those gifts. So let's look to the Lord together to, at this time. Thank you, Lord, so much for your presence that you're in this place, that, Lord, you're in Palmdale, just like you are in Santa Clarita, just like you are in the San Fernando Valley, all over the San Fernando Valley. You're here with us. You said when two or three are gathered together in your name, you said you would be with them. And we thank you, Lord, that you're with us. And uh, Lord, we want to worship you now with our gifts. 
uh, with our tithe, with offerings, missions giving. Uh, but Lord, we want to just worship you and praise you with these gifts. And now, Lord, I want to just ask, Lord, for an extra special measure of your blessing upon the gift that those are worshiping you with this evening. Thank you for it, Lord. And we pray this in the wonderful name of Jesus. Amen and amen and amen. Well, listen, I just want to jump right into our message this evening. And it's, a, uh, it's, a, it's, it's one of my favorite messages. And it's one that we have spent some time on. But just before we get to it, there's a passage of scripture that keeps running over and over and over again in my mind. And it's brought such peace to me. And it's uh, the words of Jesus, some of his last words with his disciples. And I think you know what they are, but they really help us during times like this that we're in. And in John chapter uh, 14, verse number 27, it says this here, Jesus is speaking. He said, peace I leave with you. And I like this here. He said, peace I leave with you. And then he says, my peace I give to you. Not as the world does, but the, but the way that I give to you. And then he says, let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. I want to just read that passage again. What a wonderful passage it is. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. He said, then let, your, let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. What a wonderful passage of scripture that is. And I have just been quoting that over and over and over again. It has become a part of my, my soul. Peace, the Lord's peace, not just any peace, but God's peace. Not Valium, not alcohol, not drugs, but God's peace that uh, he, uh, he gives to us. This evening, I just want to share three things real quick, like before we look to the Lord in prayer. And the three things that I would like to, to mention this evening, and it's something that we can do, all of us can do, as followers of Jesus Christ in the midst of this difficult time. And the three things that I'd like to share is, are this here, prayer, meditation, and praise and worship. Those three things there. And I want to start with the first. And you might say, well, Pastor Sammy, I've heard you say that on more than one occasion. I hear you say that over and over and again. I hear that in your emails. I hear it in your phone calls. I hear it in the text messages. Um, but we'll continue to challenge you and encourage you to do this here. And it's the first thing, and that's to concentrate on prayer, to make prayer a part of your life during all the time, but in particular during this difficult time. It's difficult for us really to think of a better thing to do than pray. And it's difficult to think of a better thing, better, a better prayer than the one that is spoken by the desperate king of Judah. His name was Jehoshaphat. And uh, I, I've been, Terry and I have both been talking about this passage of scripture. And she said, yeah, I'm memorizing that chapter. And I thought, you know what? I'm gonna do that too, because I love that, that chapter. It's one of those go-to passages of scripture for us. We've been married for 41 years now, and anytime there's a crisis, anytime there's a difficult time, you can be assured of this here, that both of us will find our way to 2 Chronicles chapter 20 and reading through that because the guidelines for crisis and the guidelines for prayer are, uh, are just so beautifully laid out by King Jehoshaphat. And, uh, and I just want to read the first three verses before we move to our next point. And in chapter 20, it says, After this, the Moabites and Ammonites, with some of the Manunites, they came to wage war against Jehoshaphat. And that's an interesting passage of Scripture, because it's not one nation coming, not two, but there's three enemies that are coming after you. And then verse number two says, Some, key, some people came and told Jehoshaphat, a vast army is coming against you. And notice, singular, not plural. They're saying, they're coming against you from Edom, from another side of the Dead Sea. And it's already in Hazazon, Tamar. That is the Engedi. And then the scripture, verse number three, says this here. Listen to his response. The scripture says, alarmed, alarmed. 
Jehoshaphat resolved to inquire of the Lord. And then he did this here, and he proclaimed a fast for all of Judah. And there's three words there that just continually jumped out at me this morning that I just looked at, looked at the meaning of them in the dictionary, looked at them in the scripture. But, but the beginning of, chapter, of verse number three, it says, alarmed. That's what Jehoshaphat was. He was alarmed. Well, what does it mean to be alarmed? Well, it, it, it means to feel frightened, to have a feeling of, of desperation, disturbed. You're in danger. It's a, uh, it's a feeling of, of extreme danger. Um, it's, it's being urgently worried. And that was the, the shoes that King Jehoshaphat was in. He was in bad shape. He was afraid. He was concerned. He was really worried. I'm sure he was filled with fear and, and, and anxiousness. And I think a lot, like a lot of people are today, filled with fear. They're anxious. They're not knowing exactly what's going to happen. They just know that there's en that enemy out there, that virus that, that's out there, that seems to be just coming for whoever. And Jehoshaphat says, listen, alarmed, alarmed, Jehoshaphat resolved. He was resolute in this here. He was resolved to inquire of the Lord. He went to the Lord immediately. He was alarmed and he was resolved. And then what he did was he proclaimed a fast for all of Judah. I want to challenge you this evening. Oh, I want to challenge you this evening because I'm sure that you've experienced some of the same things I have. When it says alarmed, I've been alarmed. I know you have been alarmed. But I also want us to be resolved, to be resolute in, uh, in going and seeking the face of the Lord. And as I've mentioned before, Jehoshaphat proclaimed a fast to the people of the land, the people of Judah. And I just want to proclaim once again and ask you and challenge you and, uh, and encourage you to make prayer a part of your day every single day. I mentioned to take 10 at 12 o'clock every single day. Sometimes we can do it, sometimes we can't, but we can find 10 minutes somewhere. We can carve out 10, day, 10 minutes in our day to pray and to seek the face of the Lord on behalf of the circumstances that we are in today as a land. And I like verse number 12 as well, that I would just want to read this here, because this is what Jehoshaphat said at the end of his prayer. He said, our God, he asked the question, will you not judge them? But he says this here, he knows the, the, the challenge that's in front of him. He says, we have no power to face this vast army that's coming to attack us. We don't know what to do, but our eyes are certainly upon you. And I think we can echo those words today, can't we? Our leader first family. We can echo those words. We can say, boy, I know some of the folks in our congregation have lost their jobs and are thinking about where am I going to get the money for that payment? Um, some are battling illnesses right now. And I think all of us together are saying, echoing the words of Jehoshaphat this evening. It's like, God, we have no, we have, we have no power to face this, this, this giant that's attacking us. We don't know what to do, but we can say it's Jehoshaphat, and it's enough. It's wonderful if we can do this here, we can say this. So we don't know what to do. However, our eyes are on you, Jesus, because we know who you are. We know who you are. We know what you have done. We know what you can do. We know what you will do. And so our eyes are upon you. We're depending upon you, Lord, with all of our hearts. The second thing that I wanted to just briefly touch on tonight is, is this here, is, uh, is meditation during this time is extremely important. It's key to your success, to having peace and victory in your life during this difficult time to meditate. Well, what do I meditate upon? Well, you want to meditate upon God's word. Because you see, there's never been a, a greater time that, that I can think of in the last few years that has been really an opportunity for the enemy to come after us and to impact us emotionally in our, uh, in our thought life as well. Remember, we're in a spiritual battle. With or without this virus that's going around us, we're in a spiritual battle. 
There, is, there, are, there are things that are taking place in the invisible spiritual world that has tremendous impact on the physical, visible world. And listen, the enemy is at work knowing that this is an opportunity to, uh, to just fill our minds with fear and defeat, discouragement. But listen, remember, what takes place in that spiritual realm will, uh, will live itself out in the visible, physical realm. And so it's important for us to meditate upon God's Word. That's the only weapon that will bring defeat to, uh, to fear and anxiety and bring victory to us in uh, what we're doing. Well, how do I meditate upon Scripture? I've had lots of people say, well, I'm not sure exactly how to meditate upon God's Word. And I've shared this before with you. If you know how to worry, then you know how to meditate. Because what do you do when you worry? Well, when you get up in the middle of the night, what are you thinking about? You're, you're worrying about that circumstance, that situation. You get up in the morning, what are you thinking about? You're at noontime, you're at the work. This continually goes through your mind, that problem, that crisis, that circumstance. And, uh, and really, meditation, I would say, for lack of a better term, I would say it's, it's positive worry. So meditation is it's memorizing God's Word or reading that passage over and over again till it becomes a part of you. I've read 2 Chronicles chapter 20 over and over again. I've been, begun to memorize it. And what happens there, it gets into my soul, into my spirit, and it has impact on what takes place up here. So I want to challenge you to, uh, to begin to memorize God's Word. Memorize it. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I want to also share this, the, the, these words from Paul. He says this here um, in the scripture, 2 Corinthians chapter 10. He says, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Well, what are strongholds? Strongholds are simply that. It's those, those fearful thoughts and that anxiety that just has a hold of us. And, uh, and so Paul says, For the weapons of our warfare, they're not carnal, but they're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Well, how do we do it? He moves on. He says this in the next passage. Casting down vain imaginations and every high thought, every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. You memorize that passage of Scripture. Memorize that passage of Scripture. And remember, what's taking place in the invisible spiritual realm will impact you in the visible physical realm. And so battle and fight. Well, how? What's your tool? The sword of the Spirit, the shield of faith, uh, memorizing God's Word, meditating on God's Word, prayer are, uh, are key to victory. And then the last thing that I want to share with you tonight is this here, is count your blessings. Worship the Lord. The Bible says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. God has blessed us abundantly. We who are followers of Jesus Christ, He has been with us. He has blessed us. He's not left us. The scripture says, I'll never leave you or forsake you. And listen, He has blessed us in so many ways. And the best thing, the most, the, the, the most wonderful thing that we can do is respond and bless the Lord. The scripture says, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that's within me, bless His holy name. And we say, well, Pastor Sammy, how can I worship and how can I praise in the circumstances that we find ourselves in? Well, listen, you just resolve yourself to worship God. You might feel like it. You may not feel like it. But I want to encourage you. The scripture says, worship God. And I want you to know if you will worship him, if you will worship him, it'll take you, it'll, it'll uh, cause you to rise above your circumstance, your situation. You know, just last week I was thinking about this, thought, well, what can I worship the Lord for? 
Um, what, what can we worship him for? I want to encourage you. You can worship the Lord for your sons and daughters. I was looking over the scriptures and I was worshiping God and thanking God for his many blessings. And I just stopped and I text um, the kids, uh, Christy, Candace, Sammy, Nate, and Matt. I, I, I text them all and say, hey, I love you. Uh, I text Terry said, I love you. I'm, uh, I was grateful saying, God, thank you for your many blessings. Thank you for a church family. Uh, thank you, Lord, for a people who care. Thank you, Lord. There's much that we can bless the Lord for and worship him for as well. You know, uh, sometimes we've been asked a question, if you could sit down and have coffee at Starbucks with anybody, you make the choice from the past, present, future. Who would you want to sit down with and have coffee with? Who's that one person? And uh, it would take me not even a second to respond. I'd love to have coffee with a lady named Corey Tin Boone. Um, a lady who spent time, her and her sister, in the concentration camps in, uh, in Germany. And she said something that I've, that I've quoted many times. And I love the, the saying because it's so true. She said, if you look without, you'll be distressed. If you look within, you'll be depressed. But if you look above, you look to Jesus, you will be at rest. And I want you to know we can worship him today. And as we worship him, it'll cause you to rise above fears, rise above anxieties in just worshiping him. Isn't that what Jehoshaphat did? He gave the order to, to the people. He said, I want the singers. He got some singers together. He got a choir together. And he said, I want you to lead the way. Instructions that he gave him. And then the scripture is so clear. It says, as they began to worship. As they began to worship, boom. Uh, the victory was won. And I want you to know, um, victory, victory is yours. Let's begin to worship him. And let's praise him for who he is. We want to take a few moments with you at this time and, and just pray with you. What a wonderful opportunity it is for us to gather together uh, to pray. And we just want to take a minute uh, together with our church family and, uh, and cry out to the Lord and look to him uh, for some of the needs that we have. And we have some special needs and uh, those that are in need of healing, uh, those that are, uh, whose marriages might be in trouble, maybe your sons and daughters are wayward. But we want to just take a, a minute during this time um, to pray for those folks, for those that might be struggling with fears and anxieties. We want to pray for you and believe God to minister to you in a special way. Let's look to the Lord together. Lord, we just come before you right now, knowing that you hear us, your eyes are on us, Lord. Your ears are attentive to us. You said it all through your word, and we've seen it in our lives, Lord. You've answered so many prayers on behalf of each one of us. And we just come before you this evening, Lord, on behalf of those in our church family that are experiencing physical challenges. And, oh, God, we just ask you to move on behalf of each one of them. For Anthony, Lord, we thank you for what you've done for him. And God, we ask you to continue to move in his body and in his soul. We pray, Lord, keep your hand on him. We pray for Susan, Father, that you continue to touch her and bring total healing to her. We pray for Marjorie, Lord, that you would be with her in the midst of this cancer treatment that she's going through. Lord, I pray in Jesus' name that you would minister your peace and your healing touch to her, Lord, in the name of Jesus, and be with her family. We pray, Lord, for Nikki, one of our seniors, Lord, who has had a stroke, and oh God, we lift her to you, and ask you to bring healing to her body, and comfort to her soul, Lord, that she would remember the times that you have moved on her behalf before, and to put her faith and her trust and hope in you once again, Lord, we pray. For all those, God, in our church who are experiencing uh, physical challenges, Lord, sickness, we just pray that, Lord, you would bring healing to them, that they would look up to you, 
that they would begin to praise you for what you've done and in advance for what you will do even yet in their lives and their bodies, we pray. Lord, we lift up those who may be experiencing fear and anxiety during this uncertain time. Oh Lord, we know the time is uncertain, but you are not. You are a God that we are certain is all-powerful, who is still on the throne, who is very much in control of our individual lives. And Lord, I just pray, oh God, that you administer to each and every one that, Lord, as, as you said in, in Philippians, it says, Be anxious for nothing but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known unto God, and the peace of God that passes all understanding will keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Then it goes on to tell us, Lord, what things to think about. Things that, Lord... Really, the only thing that matches that is your word. And God, as Pastor mentioned, meditation upon your word. Help us, Lord, to meditate on your word, on the truth of your word, Lord, that we may find victory in our hearts, Lord, in our minds, in our souls, God. In our circumstances, we pray. Lord, we give it to you in the name of Jesus, and we thank you that you are the all-powerful God, that you rule over all the kingdoms of the nations, it says in your word. Power and might are in your hand, and nothing can stand against you. And we thank you, Lord, that at the end of the day, we will see victory. Your word says you hold victory in store for the upright. Help us, Lord, to remain steadfast during this time. Oh, Lord, confident in our God. Maybe not in anything else, but in you we can be confident. And you are with us, Lord. You are with each and every person. And God, I just pray that you would reveal yourself to each one of us. Help us, Lord, we pray. And we thank you, Jesus, that you will. Once again, you will help us. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name. And Lord, we also, uh, we don't want to forget Lord, those that you've placed in authority over us. And uh, Lord, you were clear in the scripture when you told us to pray for the leaders of your land. And Lord, you didn't say if they were Republican, Democrat, Independent, Green, you didn't say any of that there, Lord. You said pray for them. And we want to thank you for our president and vice president, the, the tremendous team that you have placed together to combat this virus. Lord, we pray, they ask for prayer. And so we want to respond, the Lord, as your church, to say, bless the president, bless his staff, bless his team, Lord. Give them wisdom. They're weary. Their hours have been so long. And they have mentioned this, Lord, um, through a conference call with many pastors. They mentioned, they said, we need God's strength. Uh, we're weary. The, the hours, the strain, we pray that you would be with them. Yes. Surround the president, the vice president, Lord, for our Governor Newsom, for our Mayor Garcetti. Oh, each of them, Lord, would you surround them with your presence. May they sense your touch upon them. Give them wisdom beyond their experience as we pray. And Lord, we'll be so grateful for it. And now, Lord, we want to ask uh, for a special blessing to rest upon our leader family. Oh, God, would you take care of them? Yes, would you surround them with your presence, Lord? Would you bless their going and their coming? Yes. Would you bless them with health and strength, their families? Would you bless them financially? Mm -hmm. Bless them spiritually. Bless them in every way. We pray, oh God, we thank you for them. Yes. Lord, bless them, we pray, and we'll be so grateful for it. In the wonderful, matchless name of Jesus, we pray. And everyone all over the valley said, amen, amen. and amen. Listen, I just want to, uh, to just remind you again that we'll be coming back to you at 10.30 a.m. on Sunday morning. We're looking forward to getting back into your home and uh, being able to share some fellowship together, share prayer together as well. And then next Wednesday night, I want to be sharing... I've had questions. People have said, Pastor Sammy, is this one of the plagues of Revelation? Are we in the end times? And I want to just touch on that next Wednesday night. So, uh, so don't miss that. 7 o'clock. We'll be worshiping together and looking at God's Word to see what the Bible has to say about that. Not TV, uh, not the Internet, uh, not some phone line you call, but let's look to the Word of God and see what God says 
uh, about that. And then just before we, we uh, sign off here, you might be watching this evening and perhaps you're, you have fear and, uh, and, and you struggle. You think to yourself, boy, if I contract this virus and I take my last breath, I die. I don't know where I'll spend eternity. Well, I want you to know tonight that you can know for certain where you're going to spend eternity. Um, the statistics say you're not going to be one of them. But should something happen, do you know where you're going to spend eternity? Do you want peace? I'm telling you right now, you can only find it in Jesus Christ. And if you've never asked him to come into your heart, I want to challenge you tonight. It's this simple. Just say, Jesus, I'm a sinner. Forgive me of my sins. Cleanse my heart. I put my faith in your death and your resurrection. And I want you to come into my life. I want to live for you. You do that tonight. In fact, I want to pray for you. Lord, for those tonight, that, uh, that, Lord, they feel empty. There's that vacuum in their soul. They've tried to fill it with everything, but nothing seems to satisfy, and they're looking to you tonight. Lord, would you fill that void with your presence? Lord, in Jesus' name, would you surround them with your presence as they embrace the truth of the gospel message, Lord, that you died on the cross for our sins, and you rose from the dead so that we could have life, abundant life, not just for eternity, but we would have life now. Peace and joy. Thank you, Lord, for these dear friends. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. amen. And if you made a commitment to Christ tonight, I, I want you to get a hold of us somehow. Um, you can call the church. You can call my phone number, 661-431-8178. One more time, 661-431-8178. 8178. I'd love to hear from you, and we will get you hooked up with some wonderful materials that will help you in your new walk with Christ. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. We look forward to seeing you again on Sunday.